Well, good morning. As you can see, it's an absolutely glorious day. Not the best conditions for fishing. I always like to make an excuse, but the pressure is ridiculously high and obviously we've got clear blue skies. But, you know, spring has to be my favourite time of year. You know, everything's waking up. You can, you can hear the birds go mental this morning. The geese and swans are fighting. Um, but it's nice to be out and I'm down on Christchurch Lake at Lynchill. It's a lake I've been fishing a little bit this year and uh, being a day ticket water and holding some very large carp and some very, very pretty fish as well. Being day ticket is very busy, but that's obviously there for a reason. But, I mean, I've seen a few fish about this morning, obviously with the high pressure and the sun being out and being quite deep, they're all right up in the water and, and uh, they seem to be enjoying the sun. They won't take a floater. I've tried zigs um, and now I've resorted to fishing singles to where I've seen them show in the morning, you know, the, fi the feeding periods, because the way you see the fish at the minute is where they're playing and where they're enjoying being up in the water and making the most of the weather. You know, they're not necessarily feeding there. So it's really of a case of just keeping your eyes peeled and that's, that's where location is, is key. I know everyone always goes on about how important it is and you know, you, you just really cannot stress the importance of it and especially when it comes to spring. You know, they're, they're waking up, you know, they're, they're, they're moving about, they're looking for food, they're searching for it. And there's, there's going to be particular areas where they will favour it this time of year. I mean, on this lake now with this weather, I mean, there's a few out on the surface in front of me now. But really, you've got a shallower end to the right and then down, down to the other end of the lake, you've got a big set of reeds where when the weather's like this, normally they kind of split up and there'll be certain shoals of fish there and certain shoals down the other end. And normally it pays to do a bit of stalking, but like I said, being a day ticket, being busy, there's anglers there fishing and I mean, we can slot into a few swims close to them, but you know, we're only going to impede on their angling and affect ours and affect theirs, so it's not fair to do so. So I think we need to uh, constantly look in and trying to spot the opportunity to try and nab one, but at the minute it's not looking great. I think we need to reel in and have a look. But, you know, the key thing is just to look for those signs, look for those feeding periods and try and make the most of it. So tactics wise, it's, uh, like I mentioned with this high pressure and the sun being out of zigs are normally a, a very, very safe bet, especially in this area, being clear water. I mean, zigs have caught countless amounts of carp in this area throughout the spring. And uh, it definitely looks favourable for one now, but I, like I say, I fished them, I even fished them all through the, through the first night and still had nothing. But from what I've seen, how the fish are moving, they're moving very, very slowly. You know, they're not charging about. They're kind of all lethargic and just kind of enjoying the weather. And when they're in that mood, they are very difficult to catch. You know, you need, you know, the wind's just picked up now, which already looks a little bit more favourable. But when it's flat, calm, still, it didn't look good at all. But, you know, tactics-wise, the most important thing is, again, location. You've got to be on them. If you're not, you know, then you might as well go home, basically. Um, and then going down to like the business end, if you like, I tend to favour coming out of winter, moving into spring, either zigs and then single, like bright in your face hook baits. Um, Bosh. <laughs> now they're really mugging me off. <laughs> I've just jumped out about 20 yards out, just to the right of my middle rod. They're in the area, but I've been scooting up and down trees and stuff and watching them and they are definitely up in the water. So I think I might put some dog biscuits out and try and catch them on the top. But when it comes to bait wise in the spring and like most of the times in the year, little and often is the key. You know, there's no point piling out, you know, a few kilo of boilie and then they're not interested because I guarantee today they won't be feeding on the bottom. But you know, you never know. But I always introduce a small amount of boilie. Um, dose them up with a bit of, you know, a bit of liquid, 
boost the attraction of them and they're normally favoured to fish a bright hook bait over the top um, and then bait wise just introduce it regularly small amounts and kind of assess it from, from the fish you catch. If you start catching and you bait up and then you catch again you know you're on to winner because you've got something going you can lead off of it whereas if you just keep putting bait in and keep putting bait in and keep putting bait in and you're not catching you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot and you're not doing yourself any favours really. But the main thing is just to keep your eyes peeled and uh, try and read the situation and try and work out what they want. Now when you're fishing in the spring it always pays to uh, be prepared because obviously we all know what the, the British weather's like, you need to expect the unexpected and uh, I mean like today, saying that, <laughs> I've definitely not come prepared because I haven't got any sun cream with me and I'm most certainly going to get burnt in this but you know it's always pays to have a good set of waterproofs with you and one thing I've started doing as much as possible is scaling my kit down because in this particular water, and most waters I fish, is they are quite busy, and there might only be a small window where a swim comes vacant, and the fish are there, and you need to be quick because if you're not quick, someone else will get in there and kind of make the most of it. So I always, once my rods are out and I'm all happy, I kind of set set my gear up and kind of get settled, but to the point where if all of a sudden I need to move. My gear is almost like semi-packed down so I can just be, you know, as quick as possible. Because, you know, every every minute you need to make count and sometimes the windows in this particular water are very, 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 very fine. But if you keep your eyes peeled and make the most of it, you can reap the rewards sometimes. Now, tactics wise, when it comes to spring, you need to kind of expect the unexpected and just be prepared for, for anything that's thrown at you. Because, I mean, a few days ago, we had cold northerly winds and it was raining and it was absolutely freezing cold and the fish were all hooked off the back of the wind, hardly showing, one or two in the night and then that was it. Whereas now, you know, if you look out there, there's, you can just see the odd head just, just kind of basking along the surface and obviously now it's perfect for floaters so you really need to be fully armed, you know, have your boilies with you because all of a sudden they could change and they want a bit of food or I always have a, you know, a couple of tubs of bright pop-ups, we all have an obscene amount of pop-ups with us don't we so always be prepared with them because they do really come into their own at this time of year and then you know your zig kit as well. I'm, when you're coming down to this part of the country or you know most clear deep lakes at this time of year zigs really come into their own because obviously that sun's penetrating the upper layers of the water and they're definitely definitely enjoying it and they're up there moving about so and <clears throat> when you're looking across the water now you can see loads of little fly hatches and obviously with zigs you're trying to imitate a little bug or a little frustration so they do work really well so I can just keep looking at the lake because they are well and truly mugging me off at the minute. <laughs> but, you know, like I say, it was completely different to last week, but I'm going to be moving about, scooching up the trees, try and, try and see what they're doing and try and... Well, ideally I would like to move in, into another area, but being a day ticket is, is very busy. Um, but... Hopefully I'll have a little walk about and uh, try and see some signs. Okay, so a quick recap then. Um, like I mentioned before, location is key and as you can see on my shoulder, my bar is loaded. There's a swim's come vacant and the wind's blowing in there. I've seen a few fish lump there, so I have quickly packed up and I'm on the move but obviously that's paramount. And also the kit you take, you know, always be prepared. You know, in my van I've got spare bits of bait, tackle, um, waterproofs, 
because we know what April can be like. Um, but it's just being prepared because the last thing you want to do is, you know, say, come all the way to, you know, somewhere like this and, and not have it in your armoury and then kind of fall short. So make sure you've got all that. And, uh, but the main thing is just to get out and enjoy it. You know, there's some great action to have at this time of year. The fish are big, they're looking good. So yeah, get out and enjoy it.